This band needs no introduction. Right. It's Motorhead and Ace of Spades. It's so interesting. The pleasure is to play. Make no difference what you say. I don't say agree. The only card I need is the ace of spades. The ace of spades. It just lifts you, doesn't it? The first thing I want to point out is, of course, that unusual mic position that he's really well known for. It means that he has to lift his head a little bit. Now this is interesting because I often tell my students, put your chin down, put your chin down. And there's a reason for this. It depends on the student as well. If it's someone who gets a lot of tension, especially in these muscles here around their larynx where they're squeezing their neck, sometimes that's combined with tension in here and that chin comes up. And so by elongating the back of the neck and bringing that chin down, it often relaxes a lot of the tension around the larynx. Here, I actually don't see that much tension around here, which is good. That's why I'm saying it depends on the student. Some people might be doing this and raising their heads without tensing. And I read in an interview that he felt like it helped him sustain his voice. One of the things that it does do is shorten the vocal tract. So if you imagine the vocal tract like a hook, it's going from your larynx all the way to your lips. And if you just go like this, that space is kind of shortened. With a shorter vocal tract, you are likely to boost some of those higher frequencies. Another person that does this, a very, very different singer, is Ariana Grande. But there's also something that you cannot ignore with any singer ever is the psychological impact. It's a bit of a power stance, right? Haha. <laughs> it often helps you bring your shoulders back and be a little bit more open. So your breathing works a little bit better. You just feel great. It's really bad. It's kind of interesting because it actually seems like it, it's his whole body, like must be engaging his abs a little bit. Let's see. Yeah. It's really fascinating. I'm so fascinated. I love that kind of overdrive sound on the guitar. It's so iconic, but it also is reflected in his voice. So it marries together so well and with those driving, driving drums. I don't know how healthy it is. It's very hard to tell. His voice did change throughout the years and I think he did have some problems towards the end of his life but it could be down to his lifestyle as well. I'm not sure if it's down to how he's creating that sound. I'm not sure how it feels in his body. Of course, I am not him. It would be interesting to have been able to work with him and just discuss what he feels like is going on because that is a lot of vocal coaching. It's working with someone, not telling them what to do. And this sound that he has is so much part of his character, but it also gives a really animalistic and raw sound to the music. If you were like, the Ace of Spades, you know, it wouldn't be quite the same. I love how it's in space. Space. I love how he's playing around with pitch. He's not really being overly pitched, although it is kind of other note. Ace of spades is what it would be, or ace of spades, which sounds weird if it's really, really sad. Now let's have a little talk about some of the history of this song. When this song was released, Motorhead had already had two successful albums, but this, this one was the big success. And it was produced by a guy called 
Vic Male, I want to say. I don't think I pronounced that correctly. Male Male. But he produced the works of Fleetwood Mac, Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, and Eric Clapton, to name a few. And a lot of people say that this is the song that put a choke on the British music industry that made people say, Motorhead do not have to change their rawness in order to be commercially successful. Although Lemmy didn't agree and thought that after this, later into the 80s, that they wrote some of their best songs and made their best works. <laughs> Oh, I like the forever! Like a little bit of fry in there. Woo! Oh, just blast you! That riff, it's so simple, do, 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 but it's so iconic. When you have a backbone like that, that runs underneath, often it's fairly simple. That is that hook there that your ear wants to be like, mm. Lemmy originally started in a band called Hawkwind, and he was dismissed from the band after being arrested in Canada for drug possession. So he decided that he wanted to start his own band and came back to the UK. And he called the band Motorhead because it was inspired by the last song that he had written for Hawkwind. And there's a fantastic quote from Lemmy about this. He says, I wanted the music to be fast and vicious. The aim was to concentrate on very basic music, loud, fast, raucous, arrogant, paranoid, speed freak rock and roll. It will be so loud that if we move in next door to you, your lawn will die. <laughs> I love that. And how did this particular song come about? Well, he said that he wanted to write a song about gambling. He was really into slot machines or fruit machines. And he thought that the Ace of Spades sounded a little bit more edgy. <laughs> This is more than a song, it's an emblem for Motorhead. It embodies that live fast energy and I think it is one of the greatest rock songs of all time. Before you go, I have released my very own album, Fable. It is available here on YouTube, or some of it, and on Spotify. And the whole album is available from my website, bethroars.com. It's a story of darkness into light. All right. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.